thank you so much for so many of you to come and join us in the woods. This is a really, really special place for us. We first showed up in these woods, I think about two years ago. Um, this is Giles's home. He, he lives here. There's 50 acres of amazing woodland and it's been a massive, massive labor of love. And you'll see the love and attention that Giles has brought to these woods and created a lot of extremely magical spaces. You'll only get to experience a fraction of it today. And I hope you get a chance to wander off and get lost maybe. So why are we going into the woods? Two reasons. First is forest showering. And the whole idea of that is that one is in the woods and one is absorbing or being in the atmosphere of the woods, is absorbing that and activating all of our senses. The second reason is that also we can take great inspiration from living systems. And as we've talked about in the books, I feel that the future of leadership is really those that can really work with living systems and can help us see the organisation not as a machine, but actually as a complex adaptive system. This has been something, a journey I've been on for several years, also in my previous business, trying to sort of unpick conventional leadership behaviours and management styles and management structures. I think one definition of a attentive leader goes back to Aristotle about eudaimonia. Eudaimonia was well-being. So we live in any role we may have, but certainly in the role of economic actors, for well-being, to produce well-being, to develop, deliver well-being to society. And that is a very close definition of regenerative leadership. For me, regenerative leadership is about positive ripple effects from the way that you conduct yourself and the way you interact with those around you. And I think for me, regenerative leadership starts with the self. Um, I think it's a journey. I don't think it's a textbook skill set that you can read or you know, go on a day um, and know how to do it. I think it starts with a journey inward. Actually, the step into regenerative business is shown as a, just a natural onwards incremental step. There is a threshold crossing, a metamorphosis, a shift in consciousness that has to happen from this into that. This is all still potentially within the mechanistic paradigm. Reductive, separate from, anthropocentric, doing something to nature. This is working in tune with nature, which isn't just a head-based thing, it's a whole bodied immerse experience, hence the importance of actual immersions in nature. I found it really inspiring to meet other leaders, uh, learn from them, um, hear about their challenges, uh, see their vulnerability that they're willing to share and their openness and, and willingness to learn and I think that's been really inspiring for me. In these last two years we've, we've been on a transformation and we're very much in the transformation, we're very much flickering in that metamorphosis on, on many many levels um, but we're we're, we're, we're in it now in a very profound way. Many people in Viva have never been in an organisation like this, so we're sort of all learning every day. For me, a lot of what has been successful in the past two years already existed within Vivo. Um, I came into a business that really thrived on autonomy, lots of kind of forward thinking. If you've got an idea, run with it. You'll be encouraged. If you fail, that's okay. Just learn from that. biggest thing I'm taking away from today is just being with a quite a large group of people who are all you know aligned with with this stuff it's, it's actually quite encouraging and gives me hope in what is a pretty desperate time for business in the UK at the moment. I love the day I have friends uh, in Argentina who run a company is now nearly 100 million who say we never decide anything in the office we always go in the forest with their families so if this is, for me, how we should all be running our companies. We should be go out there in nature and have our this biggest decisions here. And then when you go to the office, if you go to the office, you do things. But this is where you reflect and you decide. So this is how every day should be like this.
Every day when you're making decisions, you should be out in nature.